Hi, this is Tim Perfit from Proxine, and I've got a couple of new things that I want to share with you. I, uh, it's an unboxing video of the new Centris, Centrius RG168 gateway um, from Laird, I guess is how you pronounced it. Um, this is a LoRaWAN gateway that works on the uh, 868 megahertz uh, frequency, which is what they use in Europe and some parts of Asia. Um, I also have, I also bought a um, uh, uh, 915 megahertz version of it. I already have a uh, uh, a gateway, a LoRaWAN um, gateway from Rising HF that I've been using, but I want to give this one a try as well. Um, so, but the important thing is that it was been hard to f to get an 868. Uh, 868 megahertz gateway um, to test our products with um, until now. So I got this from DigiKey. So I'm going to open this up in a second. Uh, what I'm going to be testing it with is our uh, 360LR, which is a asset detector. What this does is it has Bluetooth and the microchip uh, LoRaWAN um, uh, module in it, as well as Bluetooth. And the Bluetooth scans uh, for a certain period of time, detects to see if there's any uh, ice beacon asset tags, and then it reports it up through the LoRaWAN gateway up to the uh, um, through the gateway up to a cloud service to whatever application that you have. And what I'm going to use to detect is our series 400 uh, key fobs. So these broadcast as ice beacons either when you press it or when you uh, are on a continuous basis. Um, so you can just put these in uh, onto a keychain into your trunk of your car into on some machinery, and it'll be able to detect this whenever it gets into about 150 feet. And then, re then reports it back up, and we can detect hundreds of these all at one time. So it's the idea is that you can do a lot of asset tracking. Um, so let me go ahead and break this boy open. You see, so um, one of the nice, the interesting things that I saw when I first got it. So this is the, as I said, the 868 megahertz version, uh, LoRaWAN gateway, and. Um, it does have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet built into it. So the idea is that you just plug it in, and it allows you to uh, it'll detect any devices such as our 360LR and report it up. Um, it comes with uh, the the gateway itself, which I'll pull out in a second. The power supply uh, it has a Euro plug in it, so I'll have to be able to figure out how to. Uh, hopefully, it's it's 100 volts to 220 volts, so I don't have to worry about a, um, finding a step down transformer. Um, it also has two. Uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz dipole antenna. I'm assuming that's for the Wi-Fi that's built into it. And the has an 868 megahertz dipole antenna. I'm, I'm definitely that's for the LoRaWAN gateway. And then also uh, an Ethernet cable. Um, this is also interesting to me is that it has, uh, to get started with the RG186, visit uh, lardtech.com slash rg1xx underscore getting getting underscore started so um, it doesn't look like it comes with a uh, user's guide uh, i'll check it might have it but it seems like they put this in the front there's definitely they want you to go to the website so that's an interesting way to go about it so we go ahead and open this up so we got our gateway as well as it looks like a power supply so we pull the gateway out open this guy up Okay, so now we got got some LEDs in the front. We got power, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, BLE. It's, it has Bluetooth on it as well. Um, LoRa, and then an LED that doesn't have any um, uh, anything labeled underneath it, and then user as well. And it's got it's a nice blue finish, shiny finish. Obviously, it's plastic. It's got some nice mounting holes here on the sides. Um, on the back, it's labeled 2.4 slash 5. 0.5 gigahertz for Wi-Fi, and another one 2.4, 5.5 gigahertz, and then the LoRaWAN 868 slash 900 megahertz on this side. So it's got a place to get the antennas. I assume the antennas are in there somewhere. And then on the other side, we have the Ethernet port. Looks like with two LEDs on it. Uh, looks like a, a button. I assume it's a reset button and a place to put the power in. Oh, so even if uh, I assume that I can just swap out the other power supply with it to run it off of my 915 if I wanted to, um, to be able to get even if the power is not correct. Then on the back, it looks like it's got some of the uh, regulatory information. So it says it's FCC ID, IC, uh, two FCC IDs and ICs, has the MAC address for Ethernet, Wi-Fi, MAC ID, and then that M2EU, which is, uh, I imagine, for the LoRaWAN. Um, the label is the, it says it's a, oh, it's exactly the, the description on the front, which is, 868 megahertz intelligent gateway including LoRaWAN, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. 
and it does have here Rev 1. So this is the first Rev. So it's kind of interesting label that's on the back. Um, this is like the, it's interesting that they have a place for another another antenna, which was not populated. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I did notice that this is not, it's kind of solid on this side, but the side it's a little bit of a loose on that side. But it overall has a nice feel to it. Let's see, let's see what else we got in this box. I'll put the plastic away. Um, got the power supply, so now I'll find out. It says this is, uh, what does it say? It's Meanwell Enterprises. So this is uh, from uh, Taiwan Power Supply. And it has a, looks like a uh, European adapter on it. Um, and it says, what does it say on it? 100 to 240 volts AC input and then 12 volts output and then it's got like a standard plug. So I can probably swap the other one from the uh, 950 megahertz one. So that should be easy, because I don't currently have any plugs that um, I plug in that European style. Or one of the European styles, I should say. Um, and then kind of a nice box that they put in, open this up. On the bottom, we got the ethernet cable. Um, and then we've got the two, must be the two Wi-Fi antennas. And then we have the, um, 868 megahertz antenna as well. And I think that's it. And as I thought, there's no instruction manual um, with it, so I'm gonna have to head off to the um, lardtech.com to be able to uh, get the information to get me up and started. So let me let me kind of assemble this stuff together and I'll come back and, and we'll power it up and see what happens. All right, I've got it all hooked up. And um, uh, so it's pretty easy. I got it hooked up into ethernet. I've actually done the 915 megahertz version, not, not that it matters that much. Um, got the two antennas, uh, one for, for Wi-Fi. I'm not actually using Wi-Fi, I had it hooked up to Ethernet. And um, I've got the, the LoRa WAN uh, antenna hooked up. So it's right here. Um, and I went into the web interface. I wanna show you a little bit about when I first set it up. So um, here's the web interface. First thing you, you do when you log into it, it, uh, it uses uh, a connection over HTTPS, so you have to you have to accept a self-signed certificate, um, which wasn't a big deal, and they document that well in their documentation. Um, it, the, one of the interesting things is the the URL that you go to is actually a dot local, a um, uh, uh, to be able to get it locally on your network. It's uh, multicast DNS. So what they do is they do the last four um, uh, bytes of the MAC address, or sorry, last three bytes of the MAC address. Um, with rg1xx as a prefix and dot local as a suffix. So you don't have to go searching for the IP address. So you just go there and it loads up, it's really nice. And it forces you to uh, create a password, or I don't know if it forces you, but you, you create a password on first, uh, first login. Um, and then the first thing I did is I went in, I actually uh, got it configured for the Things Network. So you can see that under the, the lower tab, I went in and I selected the Things Network and I applied it. And what that does is it sets up um, the forwarding network address. So this, since this is a 950 megahertz one, it sent the uh, URL that it reports the activity to router.us.thethingsnetwork. Um, and then it also set up the uh, radios correctly. So this configuration, it has a nice diagram with the uh, spread spectrum up there. So um, I didn't have to do any of that. Basically, I just went to the preset, chose the things network. Looks like it has, uh, uh, support for streamed IOT as as well as laureate.io. I didn't try those yet. I just did the things network. So when I did this, I noticed there's a gateway ID and they, they document this as well. So I just went into the uh, things network and I went into my gateway. I created a new gateway. And well, actually, let me just kind of show you what it looks like when I do register gateway. I had to select a, I'm using a legacy forwarder and then I just put in that gateway uh, EUI in there. And then I filled out the rest of the stuff. Obviously the frequency plan is the 915 megahertz and the uh, router is uh, that same one um, or one in the US, I guess is important. So anyways, I left those mainly as the defaults. Putting in the uh, gateway EUI. Oh, it's gonna be error, let me copy this. Maybe I didn't actually paste it correctly. There we go. 
Um, I'm actually gonna save this because I've already edited it in, so you can see that it's available here. And as soon as I did that, it actually showed up as connected. So this connected came on, and I'm like, hey, it's it seems to be working. And the last scene was you know less than 30 seconds ago, so it seems like it was relatively easy to to get connected up to the Things Network. So it's actually trivial to do that. Um, so the Wi-Fi, like I said, I didn't actually set up the Wi-Fi. Um, I can actually scan the Wi-Fi networks and join one. But since I have a wired connection here, I just use the wired connection and, and they did that. I assume the Wi-Fi works fine. I don't actually uh, plan on using the Wi-Fi for it, so not a big deal. Again, the uh, I just plugged in the Ethernet cable and it picked up an IP address. I didn't even have to discover what the IP address was. so. Uh, I didn't even have to do any configuration in the LAN setting. So uh, again, it was just setting up the LoRaWAN to point it up to the, uh, the Things Network. So now my gateway is a public gateway on the Things Network, and I can see that the, the LoRa um, gateway is connected, LAN is connected, so we're all good. The next thing we need to do is take our device, our, our 360LR, which is the um, asset detector that's going to detect this iBeacon and tie it into the Things Network. So that itself was actually really easy to do as well. So let me um, go into the Things things console. And so the, since the gateway is all set up, I don't need to worry about it anymore. I'll just go into my applications. And under applications, I have an application that I had already created for other, other testings. And um, I created a new device. So I went in and uh, Here's the 360, and so I have my, um, we actually use the ABP method. Um, our device also supports OT, uh, uh, sorry, what is it, OTPP, is that right? Uh, OTAA, sorry, I got the two letters mixed up, OTAA. Um, and I just took the device EUI, application EUI, device address, network session key, and the app session key, and I put it into our device. Um, we actually do that through uh, the USB port and we just basically uh, send the commands to put it into uh, the, the settings, then we save the settings and they're used um, for the asset detection. Um, so that once that's all set up, now um, our asset detector will be scanning on Bluetooth, looking for any iBeacons that have the correct identifiers. And when it finds one, it'll actually take that information and put it up to uh, the Things Network through the gateway. Um, one of the things I want to point out is uh, under applications, uh, we have under integrations, I hooked it up to go to HTTP integration. So what happens is when that packet is sent to the uh, Things Network, it immediately calls a webhook um, uh, that is on another system. And that other system is Zapier, which you're not familiar with Zapier. It's a great system that allows you to basically bind together different cloud services. And so there's a, a, um, a cloud service that allows, basically you call a URL and it sends a push notification to my phone. So the idea is that as soon as this iBeacon is in range, uh, my asset detector will detect it, send it up through the gateway, and send me a push notification. Um, this is act our Series 400 is actually kind of neat because you can either set it as a continuous iBeacon or it has a button on it. So when I press it, it's going to broadcast an iBeacon signal for 10 seconds. It'll be picked up by our asset detector. It actually has, if you know iBeacon, it has a minor uh, number of 50. Um, so it'll broadcast this 50. It'll be picked up within five seconds by the asset uh, detector, sent over LoRa, um, LoRaWAN to the gateway, go up to the Things Network, and then call that uh, that webhook to send it. So let me go ahead and press it. And you can actually see I have the console open for our um, asset detector. So when I press the button, you should see within five seconds that we get a packet. There it is. Um, so then it sent it over LoRa to the um, webhook, and now I should get a push notification any moment now. There we go. So then I got a push notification when that button was pressed. Um, so it's all through LoRaWAN. And one of the other kind of interesting things in our asset detector, you can see that it's a it's a bunch of zeros. So it's uh, one hot encoded, which means that we can actually detect 500 iBeacon devices or things that have 500 different buttons all at one time. So we scan and we compact, we binary encode the information and we send it up and then we um, unpack it once it gets there. So it allows you to, to track a lot of different people, a lot of different assets all at one time without taking up a lot of bandwidth because you don't have a lot of on-air time with LoRaWAN.
Um, so that's it pretty much. Oh, one of the other kind of piece I want to show you is if you go in, one of the nice things is under uh, the Things Network, you can actually see the packets. So you can see this is when I press the button and this is when it found that the button was no longer there. So I'll go ahead and press it again. There I pressed it and we should see, uh, there it is. There's the button press that's on the Things Network from the gateway and there I just got my push notification. So um, I got to say this this large gate uh, uh, centrist gateway um, was trivial to set up, especially when you do it with the Things Network. Um, it had the preset configurations to it to tie a device in, like our uh, asset detector that's compatible with LoRaWAN was just easy. It took me uh, probably 10 minutes to set this up, and you know five or 10 minutes to set up integrate the uh, device into it. Um, so it was just it's was a very slick way to get devices onto a uh, LoRaWAN network. So please uh, subscribe to the channel, leave any comments below, or visit us at prox9.com and let me know any feedback. Thanks.